The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. People call Earth the blue planet. When you step outside on a sunny day and look up, it's pretty easy to see why. But it's the weather that makes our little planet blue and it makes for a lot of other colors we get to enjoy also. Shimmering rainbows stretch across stormy skies. The aurora borealis dances mystically through arctic nights. These weather stars and a whole cast of others take the stage every day all across the world. And today, we're gonna show you why a lot of people think the sky is the greatest show off Earth. by water, like ice and water vapor, mixing it up with air and heat energy from the sun. Sometimes it's violent, like hurricanes and tornadoes. Sometimes it's calm, like gentle spring breezes. But when we get really lucky and just the right combination of things happen, it's like a big movie in the sky. And when the Earth's atmosphere is the setting, the weather is the real superstar. Okay, you want to talk weather? There are tons of topics we can cover but I'm in the mood for glamour. We're here in Las Vegas, showplace capital of the world, to check out some of Mother Nature's sky celebrities. So what do you say we ditch this man-made stuff and check out the ultimate picture show? Come on, honey. All right, everyone knows what color the sky is. Blue, right? But how many people know just exactly why the sky is blue? It's time for a little pop quiz. Hi. I'm Elvis. I'm with the Weather Channel. We're trying to find out why the sky is blue. I don't know, it's been blue for a long time. We, we have one answer. I'm trying to find out why the sky is blue. Do you all know? Oh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it has something to do with the, uh, what would it have something to do with? <laughs> is it the hair? Let me ask the expert. Do you like blue? Yeah, please do it. Okay, we'll keep it that way. Yeah. We can do stuff like that at the Weather Channel. You just ask us, we'll change the color. But what color do you want this guy to be? Uh, green. Luft is blauw, omdat hij niet paars is. So simple is that. Yay! If only I spoke Turkish. Help! Anyone? Can I touch it? Go ahead. <laughs> We're trying to find out why the sky is blue. Sky is blue because of water vapor in the water, air. Water vapor in the air? Why is the water blue? I guess I'll be out here all night. You're, you're not wanted by any officials, are you, sir? Particles in the air make it blue. That's good. Oh, the atmosphere. Yeah, this is good, man. This guy has been watching the show. I'm thinking it makes everyone feel good. So blue is a good color and everyone just feels good. I feel good. They uh. painted it that way. I think it's because the bottom end of the spectrum is reflected through the Earth's atmosphere. It's a reflection off your blue suede shoes. Oh. So, Viva Las Vegas! Thank you, baby. Thank you very much. Okay, now that we've cleared that up, wrap your mind around this. If we had visitors from outer space, they would think our pretty blue sky was pretty weird. You see, the Earth's blue sky is the exception to the near universal blackness of space. Everywhere but the Earth, the sky is always pitch black, or at least another color. So, what makes our sky so different? The Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is filled with tiny obstacles like dust particles and molecules of gas. When sunlight streams down to our planet, it runs into this obstacle course and the light is scattered in all different directions. But this scattering happens mostly with blue light. So the blue light fills the sky instead of just shooting straight in. So then, why are the clouds white, you may ask? Well, good question. It's kind of the same thing as why the sky is blue, except this time, 
All of the colors of the light spectrum are dispersed by the larger water drops that make up the cloud. Now, when the colors mix together, we see white. So that's why the clouds are white. When you're talking sky shows, our planet's atmosphere offers way more than basic blue. So let's catch a quick ride back across country to Boston, Massachusetts to talk to a friend of ours. He's Jack Borden, founder of For Spacious Skies. You see, Jack believes that skies aren't just cool to look at, but they can actually help you to appreciate art and music and even get you better grades in math and science. Not bad, eh? Check it out. Looks like we'll have a little while. When you look at a, a Britney Spear, for example, you don't need a physiology course to know that she's pleasing to the eye. She's just pleasing to the eye. Well, it's the same way with the sky. You can look at the sky and you can enjoy the sky thoroughly without knowing anything about clouds or high pressure cells or anything else. But once your attention is drawn to the sky and you appreciate the sky, what happens is you are more receptive to any information related to the sky and the atmosphere. And that could be math, it could be geography, it could be history, how uh, the Battle of Waterloo might have been decided by heavy rainstorms the night before that caused Napoleon's cavalry to lose footing in gullies, you know, that kind of thing. Math, every aspect of life is related to the sky. As a matter of fact, you might ask yourself or your friends or the teacher this question. Think of something that is not related to the atmosphere, not related to the sky. And remember, we live at the bottom of the sky. The sky isn't up there, the sky is here. We live at the bottom of the ocean of air in the same way that a lobster lives at the bottom of the water ocean. And we breathe the sky 16 times a minute, roughly. And if you don't think that the sky is important in that respect, put one hand over your mouth, squeeze your nose with the other, and uh, then you'll know what real thirst and hunger are. You want air. And that's what's around you. That's what the atmosphere is. But when it comes to the beauty of the sky, nothing is as expansive, nothing is, is as huge, nothing is as, as, as spacious as the sky. It's as though you're in some immense cathedral. It's the little you and this huge, huge roof. So what could be easier? To become sky aware, you take your head, which is attached to your neck, which is attached to your shoulders, and you go like that. You look up, and you don't have to do any more. Okay, so now we know that the first step to becoming sky aware is just taking the time to look up, to check out the show that goes on over our heads every day. But once you start looking, what kind of incredible things will you see? Well, there's three different types of phenomenon or sky occurrences that happen in the atmosphere. They're optical, wind, and electrical. So let's hook back up with our weather diva, Jocelyn, who's gonna take us backstage at the Sky Show. Optical. It means anything having to do with light and vision. So optical phenomena is all about when the light interacts with the atmosphere to play tricks on your eyes. It's kinda like weather special effects. Now normally, the light travels in straight lines. But when it hits something more dense, like water or ice in the air, the light can get bent. So the white light then separates, and it becomes the most amazing colors. But the weird thing is, the air doesn't have any color. It's what's happening to the light as it goes through the air. For instance, we see the color in rainbows because of refraction. Now, don't worry if you don't know about refraction or any of that stuff yet. My personal assistant, Sarah, is with a big fan of mine, Dr. Ed Finkel, at the Fernbank Science Center in Atlanta, and they're gonna show us how it all happens. Personal assistant? I don't think so. Back here on planet Earth, we're with Dr. Ed Finkel. Hey, Dr. Ed. Hey, sir. Okay, so let's get to the bottom of this whole optical phenomena thing. Okay, the first optical phenomenon I have to show you is refraction. Refraction is what happens when light goes from one material into another and changes direction. Here's a flashlight. It's shining down from air into water. 
and you can see that the beam of light changes direction. It's actually bending downward. So that's refraction. Okay, cool. I understand that light bends, but what does that have to do with rainbows and how do you get the colors? Ah, okay. To show you that, we'll come over here to this demonstration. Here's a very bright light source and it's shining a beam of light. You can see that it's white. But over here, part of a beam of light goes through this prism. And when it goes through the prism, it bends. And it bends into these different colors. These colors are all there in the white light, but the blue bends the most and the red bends the least, and so you can actually see the component colors of white light now. So do you always see these colors in a rainbow? Yep. those are the colors that are present in white light. Okay, now what does a rainbow have to actually do with rain? Okay, well, over here we have a third demonstration. When it rains, the air is full of raindrops and little water droplets, and those are perfectly round and circular, not shaped like a teardrop. And they act like little mirrors. So right here, this laser represents the sun, and here's a beam of light hitting a raindrop. This beaker full of water is the raindrop. The light goes through and refracts here and breaks into its colors, and then bounces off the back surface and reflects off back into your eye. So if you're standing over here, Opposite the sun, you will see all the beautiful colors of the rainbow. All right, great, thank you. There you have it, optical phenomena made simple. Now, back to Planet Jocelyn. What did she say? Anyway, of all optical phenomena, rainbows are the real prima donnas. Well, they're like me, dazzling and exotic. Now, early civilizations were so amazed by them that they attached religious importance to these beautiful weather shows. And in ancient India, rainbows were linked to the warlike sky god, Indra. Now, since rainbows are made when raindrops and light meet, you usually can catch one during showery weather. But the trick is, you have to be between the sun and the shower before the conditions are right. And the larger the raindrops, the brighter the rainbow. Now, rainbows aren't the only glamour queens on the Sky Show stage. Let's check in with our favorite Sky Show critics. They're going to fill us in on the other leading ladies. This is Colin Marquis. He's one of the experts here at the Weather Channel. Hey, sir. Hi, Colin. So hopefully you can clear something up for us. What's the difference between a rainbow and a halo? It's a great question. And they both appear as arcs of light or color in the sky, but they're pretty different. A halo forms as sunlight passes through ice crystal clouds and the sunlight undergoes what's called refraction. And to see a halo, you would actually look toward the sun. Whereas a rainbow happens when sunlight interacts with raindrops, and the sunlight undergoes two refractions and one reflection. But to see a rainbow, you would actually look in the opposite direction of the sun. So how do you use a halo to predict the weather? Well, actually, one of the more famous weather proverbs is a ring around the sun or moon means rain or snow soon. And that ring, of course, is a halo. The halo is caused by the high, thin ice crystal clouds, and those high, thin ice crystal clouds oftentimes will be the forerunner to stormy weather anywhere from several hours to a day into the future. What other fun things go on in the sky that we might not know about? Well, actually, I can think of two right offhand. First one is oftentimes called sun dogs, and they are a cousin to the halo. When the sun is real low on the horizon, you can sometimes see one or two splotches of light or color on either side of the sun, and that would be called mock sun or sun dogs. And the other one is iridescence, and that is related to coronas. Think of it as little bits and pieces of broken coronas playing off scattered clouds right in the vicinity of the sun. Now, what makes a great sunrise or a great sunset? Actually, Sarah, a lot of things can. In my experience, some of those brilliant colors occur when the atmosphere is very clear, very clear conditions. Interestingly enough, man-made pollution, such as hazes and smogs, tend to wash out or mute those sunset colors. But also, big volcanic eruptions or large forest fires, the ash and smoke from those can actually enhance sunsets over a large area and sometimes under the right conditions, you can see brilliant pinks, which would otherwise be quite unusual. Cool, thanks Colin, that clears it up. I'll see you later. All right, we've got to get out of here. Got some celestial celebrities we want to catch before the sun goes down. Come on. Wait. We're out here in the Nevada desert, 
to talk about the second type of sky show phenomenon, wind. We all know what wind is, right? It's air in motion caused by temperature changes on our planet. It can be gentle and mild. Or powerful and destructive. Sometimes it can be a total show off. Check out this sensational wind bag. It's a water spout. When a column of air starts to rotate fast over lakes and oceans, this guy appears. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Horace, and uh, I'm a dust devil. <coughs> Sorry. That's no dust devil. That's a dust devil. Dust devils are whirling windstorms. They resemble many tornadoes, but they're nowhere near as damaging or intense. They usually happen in desert or dry environments and can be as small as a couple of feet high. The biggest ones get over a thousand feet tall. Wind makes some pretty sensational moving pictures, and when you combine it with glamorous optics, you've got a sky full of sensational color. But there's one member of the Sky Show cast we haven't met yet. So stick around because our high voltage gang is gonna hook us up and you better hang on because it's going to be electric. There's a lot of incredible things going on in the sky every day. But if you want big power, it's gotta be electrical. And electrical phenomena is the action hero of the Sky Show. It crashes in with a roar of thunder, delivering a bolt of energy that is so hot and intense it exceeds 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22,000 degrees Celsius. It blows trees apart, knocks planes from the sky, and starts huge ground fires that can take out entire forests. Now, this Sky Show heavyweight is produced when electrical charges cause all of the air that's around them to expand. Check this out. Ice crystals inside a cumulonimbus cloud get a positive charge at the top. Now the water droplets that sink to the bottom of this big fat cloud are negatively charged. Now look at the tower on the ground. A positive charge is forming there too, right under the cloud. All this is building up into this huge explosion when the positive and negative charges meet. This causes a massive electrical current, and presto, the lightning bolt is born, traveling at 60,000 miles per second. Now that's fast. The roaring thunder comes from the air around the bolt. It superheats, making the crash. You can actually figure out how many miles away the storm is by counting the seconds between when you see the lightning and hear the thunder, then divide by five. That was close. The Empire State Building in New York City is struck by lightning 500 times a year. Who says lightning doesn't strike twice? Lightning comes in lots of different forms. It might look like forks crackling down. It might cover the whole sky in a glowing sheet. Or it might just streak to the ground with one fiery finger. It all depends on how far you are away from the charge. But one thing is for sure, lightning is dangerous. When lightning starts, move indoors. Stay away from metal pipes like water pipes in the kitchen and bathroom. That includes computers and telephones. But if you get caught outside, try to get in a car. It's a lot safer than standing on the ground. Never seek shelter in a metal structure, near metal fences, or underneath tall, isolated trees. And if your hair starts to stand on end, immediately drop down on all fours and keep your head low. Don't stretch out because that would put your full body surface in contact with the ground and the electrical charge. Not good. Lightning is just one of the electrical phenomena that can light up the sky, but there's a whole supporting cast of phenomena also. Ball lightning, St. Elmo's fire, and Texas ghost lights are all just as hair-raising. But let's head north to check out a real light show, the Aurora Borealis. Our friends back at the Fernbank Science Center are gonna show my former personal assistant, Sarah, how it works. Much better, thank you. Okay, the Aurora Borealis is definitely a star in the sky show, but what exactly is it and why don't we get to see it very often? Okay, well to understand the Aurora, you first have to know that the Earth has a magnetic field. And in our little demonstration here, the magnetic field is going to be caused by these coils of wire with electricity flowing through them. If you look at this compass, you'll see when I turn up the current, it produces a really strong magnetic field. That's the first part. Now the second part is the sun, which is represented here by this little cylinder, gives off light, but at times it's very active and gives off highly charged, fast-moving particles which slam into the Earth's atmosphere, hit the molecules, and make them give off beautiful colors of light. When the magnetic field is on, these particles swirl around in big spirals around the Earth, 
and end up at the North and South Pole where they produce the beautiful displays that we call the Aurora. All right, great, thanks, got it. So, we've seen what the Earth sky has to offer. Checked out the Sky Show phenomena, optical, wind, and electrical. But the real Sky Show fan is a thrill seeker, always looking for the next incredible sunset. So what's in the future for us? Where do we go to find a new sight sensation? We go up, my friend. We go up. Uh, when we go to space, we have to worry about space weather. Uh, back in the early 70s, we went to space with Skylab and learned a lot about the sun and how it produces space weather. Uh, our sun's a variable star. It gets slightly brighter and dimmer over the 11-year sunspot cycle, but more importantly, it produces huge explosions where the energy equivalent of 100 million atomic bombs going off in a matter of seconds blasts a billion tons of material and sends it through the solar system at speeds of over a million miles an hour. What the sun does influences our climate here on Earth. We see periods like the, the modern minimum uh, during the 1600s to 1700s when the sun was very inactive, no sunspots at all for 70 years, that corresponded to a cool time here on Earth. Uh, so we know there's this connection, but we don't quite understand how it happens. And so this is, this is a, a topic for future scientists to help us to understand is how, what is it about the sun and its variability that actually affects weather here on the surface of the Earth. But the space around planet Earth isn't the only place with outer worldly weather. You remember what the main component of weather is? You got it, the atmosphere. Now, do we know of another planet that has something going on up above its surface? Well, try Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun, and yes, Mars absolutely does have weather. But the weather on Mars is very different than the weather on the Earth. When Mars is close to the sun, you have massive dust storms. And these dust storms completely cover the planet. It's not just like um, having an ice storm in one lo localized part of our country. It's like having an ice storm or a dust storm completely covering the planet Earth. Now that would be a catastrophe. We have to design the spacecraft so that it can stand up to changes in temperature and pressure that it's going to find there. So it really does come down to what is the weather like on the planets that we're going to explore. So, that's it for the Sky Show. We've seen some of the most amazing sights that planet Earth has to offer. We've seen dazzling storms, shimmering, shifting northern lights, and optical phenomenon with colors that are out of this world. We learn where they come from and what makes these sensational moving pictures tick. Most of all, we learn that it's important to be curious about the sky above you and to appreciate all the beauty that nature unfolds. Want to take it to the sky show? All you have to do is step outside and look up. You've got the best seat in the house. For the Weather Classroom, I'm Christine. See you at the show.